Good afternoon. Pat Ziemer here with MagnaWave welcoming, welcoming you to the afternoon edition of Tuesday Office Hours. I do office hours every Tuesday at 9 a.m. in the morning and again at 2 o'clock in the afternoon where I'm available uh, in the office to answer any questions that you may have with regard to PEMF devices, uh, PEMF therapies, uh, potential uses for the device, how the device works, anything along those kind of lines, I'm available to uh, be here and answer any questions uh, that you may have. And there's my phone going, and it just goes like that whenever it wants to. I got it turned off so it won't bother me, but it's there. And it rings. And uh, so at any rate, uh, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. I had a couple of questions uh, this morning after the office hours uh, broadcast that I want to potentially address. And the one has to do, uh, uh, a woman was having a conversation with someone talking about the body receiving the energy, the magnetic signal that's produced uh, as the as the device does its work. And the question is, uh, the question was, does it, does the wave actually go into the body or does the wave cause the cells within the body to react differently. It's clear that the cells are going to have a response to the wave, but I'm not clear on the wave held within the body. It was an interesting question, and the person she was talking to is a electrician by trade, and they were talking about conduct conductivity and uh, those types of, of applications. Welcome to the folks that are watching us. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you uh, enjoy the program so it gets us better re better reviews and better uh, access on Facebook. I'd appreciate that very much. So the question was about what happens with the wave. Well, actually the wave does penetrate the body. Uh, and and the, talking about that a little bit, the wave where they found through the NASA studies and so forth that the wave, if the wave comes up, whether it's a round wave, um, a square wave, the secret to the healing aspect or a sawtooth wave is once the wave goes up that it's a rapid decline. It doesn't go up and do one of these things. It goes up and comes straight down. And with the high-powered devices, the wave actually stops. So in this case, we're not putting any electricity into the body. We're putting a mag magnetic field that will penetrate the body. The magnetic field will penetrate walls, will penetrate casts, will penetrate clothing, will penetrate any any substance with the exception of lead, much like a um, x-ray machine. And it has trouble for some reason with chicken wire. I guess because the way the wire is made, it has a tendency to deflect off the wires and uh, doesn't go through just past straight through. But at any rate, so the wave actually, the magnetic field actually penetrates the body and that's where the energy that's coming off of that wave, it because you can put weaker waves or stronger waves, goes into the body making the cell walls uh, as it penetrates the cell walls, making the cell walls more permeable, allowing the cells to better have an oxygen uptake and improving the blood flow helps the ATP production, which is the energy of the cells, and the overall thing. The wave itself does not stay in the body. It passes on through. The effects of the wave, the improved oxygenation, the improved uh, blood flow, the sense of well-being, uh, the inflammation reduction that occurs uh, as a result of the improved oxygenation, can remain in the body. So the effects remain, but the wave itself passes through the body, through the blood cells, through the bone, through the cartilage, through the tendon, through the, through everything. It, it just goes, goes right through. So it was really a good question it, it asking about how it actually, uh, performs, uh, once it goes through into the body. Um, good afternoon, Tim. Thanks for being here. Uh, folks, if you have a question, please uh, come out and uh, ask that question, and I'd be happy to answer it. I got a question the other day um, that was presented as to the spark chamber, because we'll talk about the spark chamber. Other people talk about the plasma chamber, and they'll say they have a, you know, and, and that's, that's an interesting thought, because you, if it's a plasma chamber or a spark chamber or a spark gap, they're all the same thing. And what that means is that there is basically a, an apparatus inside of the device with two electrodes, and they're, they're separated. They can be adjusted to be closer to each other or further apart from each other. When they're further apart, the spark that goes between them is a larger spark. It takes more power to generate that spark. So when, it, when they're farther apart, 
a part and the power goes up and they fire, it's a stronger par- spark when there are a stronger force of energy. When they're close together, it's a lighter spark, and so it's not so strong. So at any rate, I was asked that question, how the spark chamber actually uh, works and how it is necessary for the uh, for the devices, if they're uh, analog devices. And so to that end, I made a video that I will play for you now. It's three or four minutes long, and it demonstrates how the spark chamber operates, how the machine uh is powered by the spark chamber adjusting the power of the device and also a, somewhat of how the digital devices work. So I'll play that for you now when I come back. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them at that time. So let's take a look at this video. Uh, bring it up and here we go. So I've been asked the question, how does the spark chamber work or the spark plasma chamber or whatever you want to call it and how does a digital spark operate with these devices. So I've drawn some information here on the board and I want to show you first how the analog spark chamber operates and what's important about it with the devices and then I'll show you a digital uh, operation of the spark generation. So here we go. I'll come up closer to the uh, board here. So what we have that's very important to the power generation and how the devices work is we have a capacitor. A capacitor is where the power builds up into the machine to get the strength that is needed to approach whatever it is you're dealing with uh, in using the machine. So the capacitor is there, then we have a spark chamber, then we have the coil that is uh, part of the whole process. So what happens is the power is coming into the machine. It's coming in here and then this capacitor, much like a well or a, a barrel that you would fill, begins to fill up. And when it hits a particular power level, that is regulated by the spark chamber. So the way the spark chamber works is you have two electrodes in this spark chamber. If they are very, if they are farther apart, the spark that is generated will be stronger. If they're very close together, the spark that is generated will be smaller and not quite so powerful. So what happens is we've got, and we're going to show you here with the with the electrode separated, the power begins to build up until it hits a level that as it's going in here will cause a spark to jump between those two electrodes. So here we go. The power is building up. The electrodes are farther apart. All of a sudden we get here and there's a, there's a bolt of spark that occurs between these two electrodes. When that occurs, then the, pow- the power that's generated comes out of the coil or of the cord goes into the coil and where you place we have a circle we'll get a signal. So there's how the signal is generated. When we have this circle you create a magnetic field. So it's generated, comes out of the capacitor into the spark chamber. When the power level which is dictated by the electrodes is reached then it will fire and it will come around and power the coil. If these coils If these two things are very close together, then this spark that is generated is very small and less power is generated through to the coil. So the magnetic magnetic field that's generated is not quite as strong. So again, that's how it works. Capacitor, spark chamber, coil. Now on the digital device, we're going to change this here. It's no longer a spark chamber. It is a computer chip or whatever you want to call it and let's do it this way. Let's suppose we've got one, two, three, four, five. If you set your machine on a two, let's just say you're right here, as this power begins to build up, this opening is available. So when it hits enough power to go through this opening, then it'll come out, it'll charge, it'll send the signal around to the coil. If your opening is down here and this opening is closed on your digital machine, this is a very basic explanation, then it takes more power from your capacitor to fire fire from the 5 setting and send a stronger signal to the coil. So that's basically how it works. One is, is physical in that you have a spark chamber with electrodes, that the space of the electrodes determines how much power is released. On the digital system, you have a little computer chip with various openings, and you open this opening, and when it's got enough power to fire fire through those, then it'll release the power, and it'll go into the coil. So I hope that explains the difference between the digital 
and the analog power sources for the devices and it also shows you the importance of the spark chamber when you're dealing with an analog device. So I hope this answers your question and if you have other questions please let me know. I'd be happy to answer them at any time. Pat Zemer, wave on with MagnaWave and have a great day. Thank you. So there you have it. That's how the spark chamber basically is the regulatory part of the machine that, that determines how much power is released and goes through the coils. And the digital system, as I said, there's you may have numbers, you may have low and high, any different, many different ways to establish uh, the power uh, designation on the digital machines, but it just opens when you select a number. It just makes that particular path available, and it doesn't take as much power to go through that path, and away it goes. So if you have any questions uh, with regard to that, uh, please answer, ask them, and I'd be happy uh, to answer them for you at this time. But that's a really a good uh, question that people have asked, is how does it work, and how does it function to create the signal and the power that, that is created. Uh, I will tell you that, that one of the things that the high power devices do, and I know we've discussed this before, but what happens when it, it reaches that level of power and it fires, that signal comes out and is released and the, basically the system shuts off, There is it turns off and then the capacitor begins to build again. It's not a continual type of signal. It starts and stops, starts and stops. Uh, so let's see, we have a question. Uh, oh, thanks for keeping us informed. Great explanation. Well, good. I, I hope it was a good enough explanation because sometimes I say these things and I get a little confused as to uh, uh, myself as to what's the best way to explain it so it's easily understood um, uh, by people who are asking asking the questions. So there's another question that I received. Is there any bit to using a TheraPlate in conjunction with MagnaWave? Now, a TheraPlate basically is a vibrating platform, much like you would sit in a vibrating chair or you would use a vibrator on your shoulder or on your back to help promote blood flow and to improve or increase. That doesn't only increase, but it just helps circulation, just keeps things going to, to circulate. So a TheraPlate is, a, is an item that you can stand on. They have them for people, for small animals, and for horses that you stand on this plate. The plate vibrates, and that vibration comes, passes through the body and is said to improve circulation. Certainly, I'm, I'm sure that it does do that, but what the TheraPlate doesn't do is enhance the oxygenation of the blood cells in the body. So can the TheraPlate be used with MagnaWave? Most assuredly. It's very relaxing. Uh, people like to stand on it. it. It feels good to get that vibration from your feet up through your body. In the sense of reflexology, you're massaging your feet, all the areas of your feet, so that can be beneficial from the reflexology standpoint with your standing on a TheraPlate and uh, that, that type of thing. And then in conjunction with the MagnaWave, in order to get the the direct inflammation reduction. So if you want to work on a horse's knee, for example, or your knee, and you have the device on your knee and you're helping take away inflammation and relieve the pain, and then you stand on a thing or sit in a vibrating uh, type of chair or whatever it may be to just stimulate your whole body, that, that's a good thing. And, and so complementary use of the two, uh, two items are great. Are they necessary? No. Um, is one better than the other? I wouldn't say, I, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not in, the, in the field here to sit and say what's better or what's not better when it comes to it. But the difference between the MagnaWave and a TheraPlate is the MagnaWave does lead to better oxygenation of the blood cells by actually making the blood cells more available to have a better oxygen uptake. Now, but complementary, they can be used uh, very well in a complementary method. Now, to that end, uh, we have a new product, if you wanted to look at on our website, called the Wave Oasis Lounger. And what it is, is a, it's a massaging bed uh, or mat that you can lay on. It's thick, and so you kind of sink into it, and it starts, it begins to massage your whole body. The unique aspect of it is it's using sound waves, sound frequencies to penetrate into the body and at frequencies that are beneficial to the body for various, whatever it may be, for anxiety, depression, um, sense of well-being, 
uh, whatever it may be, meditation, uh, a lot of different ways to utilize. And it plays music that you can listen to through headphones. And the bed, the, the lounger, if you will, actually vibrates to the music. So it'll vibrate your shoulders when the music is high and, and full. Then you'll get the full vibration or it's calm. And it maybe works down your back. So you, it just massages different areas of your body at different times in synchronization to the music that plays. So we're getting, and then the bed, the mat, the lounger can also have PEMF built in. So we can provide PEMF during the lounger music experience, or you can have the lounger to be used. And then when it's completed, you can have the PEMF administered at that point in time. So you get the range of the full range of vibration and the music frequency and, and all of that at the same time with PEMF. Really a neat application. Kind of goes hand in hand with the TheraPlate uh, type of question uh, that people quite often quite often have. So uh, I, I'm here. Uh, those are the only two questions that I got after the uh, program this morning. So I am available to answer any questions, any other questions uh, that you may have. Uh, with regard to our new marketing program, if you wanted to know more about that or what we, we might be doing with regard to, to anything else. Uh, I did mention this morning someone asked the question about the uh, Pulse Pro, which is a device that we carry. Uh, and it, the timer has been changed on that, so it's a, a longer timer. It can be adjusted from z from one to ninety minutes if someone wants to have a longer type of session. Let's see here. What happens when you need more? And the highest setting on the semi isn't enough. Longer sessions, Brenda. That that's a very good question. The signal on the semi is the same type of signal that's produced on the Max machine or the high-powered Maya machine, but it is not as high. And so that is you. You really answered your question. If you have something and you want to work at it, and and the the 15 minutes or 10 minutes is not long enough. Just do it longer. You might do a 20 minute session as opposed to a, or a 15 minute session as opposed to a uh, seven or eight minute session with the Max machine. Uh, rarely do the Max machines ever get turned off, turned up when you're doing a, a horse or a person to the highest power. The only time those devices are turned to the highest power is if you're working on a joint that doesn't have a lot of tissue and you can put more energy into the area comfortably, or a foot that, that you're dealing with, foot or ankle or wrist, something like that, or uh, a foot on a horse, ankle on a horse, same thing on a, on a small animal. So you rarely do you turn them up all the way, but you may turn it up higher than what the semi will go and at that point you simply simply want to run the semi longer so uh, a what you would do in five minutes on the on the max machine maybe a 10 minute treatment on the semi uh, if you do it 10 12 minutes on the max you might do it 20 15 to 20 minutes on the semi the the neat thing about the semi uh, that really is a little bit more beneficial than the max on the max all you're getting is the high not all you're getting is the high voltage and it's click click or click 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 type of signal with the semi you're getting two signals at one time there's a very low kind of in the Schumann resonance uh, area it's very brrr, if you can listen to the clicking and we have a little device that you can hear it if you don't have the device you won't hear the low signal and you won't feel it because it's so low but it's going on in the background the whole time that you're receiving the higher intensity signals that are so critical and, and good for inflammation reduction. So you're really getting a double application there. So in some cases, the times really aren't longer, but you just feel that they're longer because maybe you're not feeling the semi as much because it's not as powerful. So you might just want to go a little longer to get the uh, application that you're looking for with the semi compared uh, to the Max device. I know that um, uh, I've had these questions before and people have used the Max when they're dealing with various tumors or, or things like that, or they've used the, the Pulse Pro or the Semi Machine. A year ago when I had a, a little scare with, with prostate and, and I needed to, it was inflamed and I needed to get the inflammation down, I used the Semi Machine for 30 days between the time of, of checking and the time of doing a, a biopsy and by that point in time everything was was benign the area that that they found through through uh, ultrasound was dead and benign and and there was no issue and I continue to this day treating myself daily uh, uh, 
by either placing the coil on my abdomen or sitting on the coil and treating my 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 tract, my my uh, prostate daily, and uh, everything seems to be good at at this point in time. So I, I watch that closely, but that's how it can be used. And in that case, the, the semi machine worked just as well as the max machine. So it's a great question, Brenda. And and, uh, and but that is that is the answer is to just do it a little longer. Let's see. We have another question here. Uh, hi, Dana. Um, I get a lot of muscle spasms brought to the surface on my equine clients. What's the best protocol to get it to release? I find using the MagnaWave aggravates it once it comes to the surface. Hmm. Um, I don't know that it would actually um, aggravate. You do get you do get muscle spasms or muscle response. When you treat the body, you do get a muscle response as it finds area of sensitivity. At that point, you want to gauge how your the strength of your machine, how you want to want to treat the area. If in fact it you you feel that it aggravates the area, then you want to turn your device down a little bit so it's massaging the area more than than overstimulating it potentially. Very difficult to uh, overstimulate an area because if it really aggravated the area to where it was painful, the horse would not allow you to treat it. Nor would a person. If you turn it too high, they're uncomfortable. They don't want you. They don't want you to do that, and they'll tell you that that accordingly. So. Um, the, the best way to do it is is more is not always better. Uh, more is beneficial if if applied in the in the proper sequence and at the right the right methods. Uh, and, but many times in a situation like that, if you find the area, the the difference when you're setting up the what you don't know when you're dealing with a with an animal with the mass of a horse, you don't really have that on a person so much because even a large person. I mean, you know, a big football player, their shoulder, it's not going to be much bigger than this. And, and that's what you're dealing with. Whereas on a horse, you could be talking a lot of depth before you get to get to things coming in down from the top, from the sacrum and so forth. So you don't need as much power in some of those cases. You want the signal that we deliver to get in and penetrate and relieve the area of stress. Now, it, what happens is the resistance of the moisture and the, and the muscle tissue performs a, a resistance to the signal, which inhibits maybe how far it can go. But these signals can penetrate all the way through the body, even on lower settings. And so, but if, if you have something that's deep or into the tissue, you might need a little higher setting to get to. That's why when we when we scan, quite often we can go over the body and we don't have something here, but we move over here and we get a palpation or a feeling if you're treating someone's, you're working on, on someone's back. But in, And if you want to get to it, you might turn it up a little bit. If you feel that that's a little uh, just providing discomfort, just turn it down so it's comfortable. Comfort is the key when you're dealing with these types of, of issues and sessions that you're providing. Barbara has a question. Please explain why a horse responds more within the wings or in, more within the wings and maybe with the single loop. We find we have to set our semi on medium when using the wings versus on high when the single loop in the same area of the body. Great question, Barbara, and, and I'll, I'll explain that to you. And, and we've had this same situation, whether you're using the wings, the large loop, or uh, the butterfly or the paddle. And what it boils down to or what it comes down to is the, the tissue that's being stimulated. So, for example, if you're, if you're treating someone's back and you're moving that, or a horse, and you're moving that coil around the body and you find the spot where you're getting palpitation or you find the spot on someone's back where they're feeling it, then you're at, you're at that spot and you can treat it. And in some cases, because you're just doing that spot, you can turn it up a little bit. And, and penetrate deeper into that particular spot, clearing everything out and helping to reduce the inflammation. When you're dealing with the wings or with the large, you know, when you're comparing the large loop to the, to the wings, when you're dealing with the wings, the wings are big, 24 inches in diameter, so you can lay it over and treat both hips at the same time on a horse or both on a person. They can lay on it and treat the, the upper part, the front part of the body and the back part of the body at the same time, a very dynamic type of treatment that you're providing to the hips or legs, knees, wherever it may be to treat top and bottom at the same time. But what happens is you're stimulating so much more tissue 
The signal goes in and the whole area of tissue is being stimulated and boom, you see it. And so when you're on, on the semi, when you're on high, and that's really why we, we rewrote the software, had the factory rewrite the software for us on the semi, was to be able to have the various settings so you could treat a small horse or a dog or a, a larger horse or a horse that's more sensitive. You have the low, medium, and high with the semi in order to be, to be comfortable. We did find the same thing when we put those large wings on the back of a horse and put it on high. In many cases, it was more movement than was potentially comfortable because of the way it was pulsing into the body. So it's the amount of tissue stimulated. If you're using the large butterfly, the large wings, you're stimulating a lot of tissue. So even on the medium setting, you'll get a lot of acetylation of the area. If you come down to where you've got the large loop and you're stimulating a smaller area of tissue, you won't get the, as much movement as you do with the large wings. And if you come down even further to the butterfly, you can then become very uh, telling in where the sensitive areas are because you're finding, you're able to, you can move over the body and you've got sensitivity here, but you move two inches over and it's not there. So you know where it is. That's one of the challenges when you're using the wings. The wings are very beneficial to treat large or have sessions on large areas of the body in a massaging type of effect. And you're helping everything. You're helping. The, you're doing the same thing to oxygenation, same thing to blood flow, but you're doing such a large area. So you really can't narrow down as easily where the stress is coming from where the body is feeling stress. Now, a veterinarian or a doctor will look at that and use a different term for where we're dealing with the stress and so forth. But with the, with the large ones, you're stimulating a lot of tissue. Smaller ones, you're able to find pretty much where the areas of stress are. Great question, Barbara. I hope that was clear enough in my explanation. If not, uh, please, you know, tell me something and I will try to explain it a little further. But it's just the amount of tissue that you're that you're stimulating and and you quite often have the same thing on a person if you put a the the large loop or if you had someone sit and lean back into the wings where you had them together and you were treating their back with the wings laying together and you begin to turn it up uh it's such a large area that they may be uncomfortable because of what it's doing here and yet they're not feeling it in the low back whereas if you had a smaller loop you could concentrate on the area so uh lori thank you uh, folks if this is working for you give us a, uh, a thumbs up or, or uh, send us some friendship and uh, that helps us on Facebook. Uh, be sure to like us on Instagram and follow us on Twitter, Twitter to keep up with what we're doing at MagnaWave so you can stay up on all the developments. Uh, we're really working hard to, to bring uh, more explanation to get deeper into the various protocols, particularly as we deal with our webinars, the MagnaWave wellness webinars that we are having on Thursdays. Uh, I hope to get back in the swing of that this Thursday uh, <clears throat> to bring the webinars to you. We're going to promote those webinars and work on an area of, of health and wellness. We may on occasion talk about areas of health and wellness where integrative medicine or integrative te therapies are used to benefit people with whatever many different situations that they face in their life. And then if, if there's a complementary aspect to MagnaWave and how it can help, we, were, we certainly want to describe and discuss that at the same time. But certainly uh, keep an eye out and tune in to the webinars. Uh, whenever we have them, and so you can uh, pick up on a lot of uh, health and wellness ideas. And uh, check out our podcast. Um, it's uh, available on our website under the About page, I believe it is. You can see the podcast, and I'm adding new uh, uh, programs to the podcast. I'm going to add one uh, with Eric Wong from Ananda Hemp. We've got It's about an hour long where he's asking, answering questions about the, the hemp in general, the legality of hemp, where they've been in the legalization process and the, the farm bill in the United States. And so that'll be a good one to watch. Uh, I may play that uh, also on Facebook, so it can be available to you, to you folks on Facebook to uh, view that and those types of uh, webinars that we're bringing to you. So again, if you have any questions, uh, appreciate you all being with me today. Uh, it's, it's always fun to, to um, answer these questions and to help you get the, the information that you're, that you're looking for. Uh, something that we have that we haven't talked about recently, if you'd like to have a few copies, is the MagnaWave News and Views. Um, that we have a News and Views that covers 
uh, all three aspects of the business, small animal, human, and, and large animal, or all three aspects of how the device works with, with small animals and, and humans uh, and, and large animals. And then we also have a new version that we're coming out with, a new issue that is just dealing with the human aspect of the devices and testimonials and that, which is excellent if you're in this for a business to give to your customers. If you're in this and you want to just know more about it, uh, give us a call at the office, and we'd be happy to send you a few of the news and views uh, newspapers, and you can you can have them, share them with your friends, family, whatever whatever may be best uh, for you. Another question: um, treated two people, and then felt like I went into detox the next day. Is that possible as a practitioner? Well. In, in a sense, you are um, you are receiving signals as you're treating. You are if you're treating uh, a person and you lift that coil up uh, an inch off of their body, you cut the signal in half. The being in contact with the body is the best way to supply the signal, uh, particularly when it's an adjustable type of signal. Now, with that said, one. In a hundred people, pretty much, have a sensitivity to the PEMF signal that could, you know, they, they, they're the same kind of person if they, if they're uncomfortable under high voltage wires. If the power coming off the high voltage wires making them, uh, uncomfortable. Uh, th- that can happen. So you could be, uh, Brenda, if you were in a situation that maybe you were uh, a, a bit toxic, and it runs both ways. The device can detoxify, and it does do that, serves to as a detoxifying agent uh, for the body. That's why we talk about having plenty of fluids and hydration after treatments to uh, to begin to begin helping yourself. But if someone is has a higher toxic level. Uh, a higher level of toxins and they and they're treated then yes they can take on an effect uh to where they feel that that they've been detoxed or they feel a bit uncomfortable from the process as it's attempting to help the body uh be in a good state of homeostasis and and that's what occurs so uh could that uh, and and that I've had people that very few once in a while, and so it, kind of monitor that a little bit, Brendan, and, and call me if you want to talk about it or tell me what's what's going on. But again, uh, and it's maybe one out of a hundred does on occasion have some of that type of situation based on their either being detoxified or a little more toxic than the than the normal, and could be a bit uh, 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 feel the effects. Of that type of uh, situation, nothing that's normal, nothing that that's regular, uh, and so it could just be, you know, if if your immune system is a little low for some reason, and or something going on, and and you, you know, you can just have various uh, effects, but it's nothing that is damaging, and it's nothing that that uh, uh, would worry about, uh, except that I said one out of one out of one hundred people sometimes are just not comfortable around these types of energy devices. Uh, if, if you don't have it all the time and it happened once, then it's, I would consider it to be a, an anomaly or, or that, that type of thing. Great question. And if you have further uh, input on that, Brenda, please uh, throw it up there and I will do my best to, to answer that question question for you. And that's the thing about this is, is whatever the question may be, I'm certainly ha- happy to, to address it. Uh, it, it's a very viable therapy and it works very well and we've been using it since 2002 uh, been around the world with it and and certainly understand the the pros and cons and and so on and so forth and and how sometimes what are the best ways to apply this type of therapy uh, for the best results for your for your clients customers friends and family Okay, uh, any more questions? I'd be happy to answer them. We've been with you about 35 minutes at this point. I'm happy to stay as long as we have questions. I just don't want to banter uh, too much in because uh, I want you, I know you're all busy and you have a lot of things to do um, with your day as well. 
Um, so it, it's uh, it's always fun to be here. Great questions again this afternoon. Sometimes the afternoon sessions are a little more difficult. I don't know. Uh, there have been plenty of people on today. It's uh, Thank you for being there. But sometimes in the afternoon, it's just when we've covered a lot of stuff in the morning, and I just don't want to cover the same stuff in the afternoon. If somebody happens to watch both of them, I want them to get different uh, new content, new questions, uh, new answers. Sometimes they're repeated uh, over two or three weeks again uh, on occasion, but that's, you know, that's as it goes. Uh, so I, I thank you for joining me. I uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, I'll, give, I'll wait another 30 seconds or so and see if anybody has a question or a comment or if you've had a question asked of you a lot. Maybe you don't have a question, but you've been asked a question a lot that you feel that it would be good for me to uh, throw out there for people uh, to hear and, and understand. Um, I'd be happy to, uh, to do that. So it looks like everything is quiet. Folks, I really appreciate the, the thumbs up. That always helps us uh, gain uh, distribution on the Facebook platform. So if you can like this and uh, send, us some, uh, send us some love, we'd certainly appreciate that. Be sure to uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, MagnaWave PEMF on Twitter and Instagram. We're on there regularly. And uh, uh, check out our practitioners. Go to the practitioner page if you want to know uh, who's available to you. You may be seeing, let me put, put this up. Uh, oop. Emily, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, a lot of new marketing things going on that we're working with uh, here at MagnaWave to help the practitioners build their business and get the word out about their businesses. And we're happy to share that with you uh, as we go as well. So folks, uh, thank you so much for being with me this afternoon. Uh, it's been a great time and I'll visit with you uh, hopefully Thursday on the webinar, but uh, next Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock and again at 2 o'clock. If you have any questions at any time, call the office. Give me a call, drop an email, send me a message on Facebook, and again, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Total transparency is my goal, and uh, that's what we want. So have a great day. Thanks again for viewing. Bye-bye.